Welcome to For Love and Money, Episode 4, a podcast about selling the most sapphic fiction you can. I'm your host, Rady Magden, and you're listening to The Lesbian Talk Show, and my guest this week is Jay, the head honcho at Ilva Publishing, and if you hear ambient noise around you, it's because we are at the Golden Crown Literary Society's 2018 convention in Las Vegas. How's it been so far for you? It's been great. I mean, Las Vegas is a lot for an introvert, but the conference is, I wouldn't miss it. It's really great. What's your favorite thing about going to GCLS um, every year? Because you go mostly I've every been, year. It's just my fifth year. And so I started in Portland and yeah, and went every year. And I was thinking about skipping this year, but um, I just went for the people because I have a lot of awesome friends and it's a great meeting readers. And I talked to a reader yesterday and she was so grateful she had tears in her eyes about how much lesbian fiction means to her and you don't get that online you know absolutely that's why the podcast is called for love and money because it's important we are spreading a lot of love with our stories not Mm -hmm. just in a romantic sense but in a a healing sense because it tells us that we have a community of people who love us and are like us yeah it provides representation Mm -hmm. so uh, why don't you talk a little bit about your work at ILVA Mm -hmm. and uh, what you do okay I'm an author at ILVA and I'm also the senior editor, so I have two roles. Um, ILVA Publishing, for those who don't know, it's an international publishing house, so we publish mostly books in English and um, we have a sister company who publishes German books and I'm involved in the English part. And um, I'm the senior editor, which means I'm supervising all of our other editors because that's one of our um, important um, things that we do. We provide a lot of editing um, because we want to have quality books. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. My last guest, uh, Cal Fuelan, is one of my editors, and I hammered the point home that you have to have a good editor to yeah. sell books. You you simply can't yeah. sell a quality book mm-hmm. without a fantastic editor. It directly impacts the quality of your sales. True. So what do, what do you do to help your authors promote their books and uh, spread their sales? And I know you're a global company. Mm-hmm. How does How does that play into it? Yeah. We have, um, for one thing, um, a social media expert in our company who um, helps authors who are just starting out um, set up their websites and um, look at things like SEO um, um, to make their websites as SEO friendly as possible, um, help them set up social media, um, get started on places like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, maybe Pinterest if they want. Um, I've yeah. never quite figured that one out. Um, <laughs> it's not as effective anyway. I have it, but I don't make that much use of it. I think it's better for nonfiction than for fiction. What uh, what social media do you find the most effective, personally? Um, Facebook is not as effective anymore as it used to be because they changed the algorithm. So I have, a, I think, around 2,300 followers and um, on Facebook, and not even half of them are actually seeing my posts. Um, since they changed the algorithms. Boo Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would say to reach more readers, um, Twitter is great. Um, Instagram is pretty good because it's very visual. You can post videos too. Like if you're at a conference and not everyone can afford to go um, to give readers a little bit of insight of how it is and how it looks and where who is there to make them feel like they are actually participating a little bit. Um, that's pretty great. Um, just to bond and to connect with readers. Um, yeah, I would say that. And blogging, I would say for fiction authors, is not a must-have. It's If you want to do it, do it, but um, it's it can be a waste of time if you, if you are not careful with your time. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so, personally, you're also a writer. Mm-hmm. What do you keep in mind when you're marketing your books to try and get the the news out there Mm -hmm. when you when you have a new release what do you do what's on your checklist yeah well first generally let me say um i try not to do marketing in a way that makes people feel like i'm just selling a product because i think lesbian fiction is a little more than that i agree Um, so if all of your posts are about buy my book buy my book that's not gonna fly um social media is about being social and of course you should share your new books and your upcoming releases and a new cover but it's important to keep in mind that you're talking to people and you're not just selling to them um that's exactly yeah. what my publisher said a, almost word for word thing. yeah and um what i'm mainly do, trying to do is not to make myself 
dependent too much on outside sources like Facebook. Like they could change the algorithm anytime and they did. Um, so it's important to build your own base, to be, build your brand around your website, um, to have a newsletter where you can reach readers directly and not have to rely on Amazon or Facebook or Twitter or any other source. What what platform do you use to produce your newsletter? Mm -hmm. I use MailChimp. It's pretty easy. A lot of I do too. <laughs> do it. Um, it's free up to I think two thousand. So I'm approaching that, but I will see what I do. You actually have a very large mailing list, in mm -hmm. part because of something you've been doing that I've enjoyed very much this mm -hmm. year: lesbian book bingo. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about lesbian book bingo and how you came up with it yeah. and what it is? Yeah. Um, late year, last year, I had this idea of. Um, a little bit like what Sheena is doing with the Lesbian Review, where she puts top 10 lists of, let's say, the top 10 lesbian celebrity romances. And I thought, that's it's really nice, but how can we make it more interactive for readers? Um, so I had this idea of having a bingo card with 25 um, squares and have um, different categories for each square. Let's say um, the last one I posted was summer reads. Um, there's historical fiction, there's science fiction, different genres, um, butch fam, things like that. Um, also to encourage readers to read a little more widely, to try new authors, new books, new genres and it's been very well received. Well, thank you about that. Uh, I'm really appreciative that you uh, were kind of championing speculative fiction because mm -hmm. that's my that's my jam. Yeah. And lots of people just, they, they don't, they're a little intimidated by it. They don't know that speculative fiction can be as fun as it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also like, I'm, I'm really glad that the bingo card was intersectional in that it explored trans identities mm -hmm. and, you know, characters of color. So I was, I was appreciative of that too. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't play lesbian book bingo, you should start. Are you going to do it again next year? Um, I was thinking about it, but it's been so much work. I The year's not even halfway over and I spent around 400 hours on it. Oh my gosh. I could have written a book in that time and I will do it again, but I might take a break next year and do something else fun for readers. On well, my, yeah. that's understandable. Yeah. And if you do something else, I look forward to seeing what mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. Um, so what else, what other words of wisdom do you have about the business of selling books, about mm -hmm how to connect with readers and convince them that you're worth spending a couple bucks on. Mm -hmm. I think what you need to start with is knowing who you are and what kind of books you write. You need to so think about what is your brand, um, what makes your books stand out from all the other lesbian fiction, because now there's a lot, luckily. Um, like take me for example, I write romances and I write slow burn romances. It's so in your newsletter. It's it says, in my Jay, newsletter. author of slow burn romantic exactly. fiction. It's in my logo on my website. It's everywhere. And I try to keep that consistent because that's what I write. I mean, I also write a little, a little erotica, but that's not what my fiction is all about. And I write across genres. I write historical. I write contemporary medical romance, romantic suspense. But they all have this core in common. And someone who picks up a J book knows they are gonna get a long novel, they are gonna get a novel with good character development um, that is well edited and um, I think that's what you have to start with to know who are you, what do you write, what does can someone expect if they pick up your book and then tailor your marketing to that. That's fantastic mm -hmm. advice. So uh, can you tell me what's new at ILVA? What are some of your newest releases that mm -hmm. people should check out? Yeah. Um, my next newest release is coming in August, in the middle of August, August 15, and I'm very excited about that one. The book is titled Paper Love, and it's my first book actually set in Germany, not in the US. Oh. Yeah, and it's placed in the city where I live, and I happen to think it's a great city, it's a beautiful city, and I'm very excited about being able to introduce readers to that. That's awesome. What genre is it? Is it a romance? It's is a romance. It? It's a contemporary romance set in a stationary store. So it's a workplace oh, romance. Yeah. That sounds adorable. It's, it's, I've combined a lot of the things I like, like my city and family and um, the places in my city that I like and ink and notebooks and all the things that most writers love. So. Well, I think that's great. I'm very much looking forward to your next release and all the other uh, great stuff going on at ILVA. I will be sure to add links to ILVA's website and social media in the show notes so everyone can go check it out because it's just, it's a fantastic company and they produce really good quality lesbian fiction. I bought several books from them, enjoyed them all, 
I, I, your your uh, Shifter series is kind of one of my guilty pleasures, and it's one of the first lesbic books I ever read. So it's really a pleasure to have you on the podcast. And thank you for having me. It's great. It's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you've been listening to For Love and Money, Episode 4 on The Lesbian Talk Show. If you have comments for the show, please visit our Facebook group or email them to podcast at thelesbiantalkshow.com. You can also become our patron on Patreon.com and support the great work that we all do at the Lesbian Talk Show and the Lesbian Review. We'll see you next week when I will actually be talking about Patreon and how it can help your writing career to flourish. 